Amy Price was the manager of the Cecil Hotel for 10 years, between 2007 and 2017. I believe in the 10 years I was working there, there were about 80 deaths, she said in an interview. Cecil Hotel was built in 1924 and recorded his first death in January of 1927. Percy Orman Cook took his own life by shooting himself in the head. It didn't help that the hotel sank into the Great Depression in the 30s, and even though it gained some popularity in the 40s, the following decades turned the area surrounding the hotel into the infamous Skid Row area of downtown Los Angeles. Here are the messed up stories about the notorious Cecil Hotel. Number five, the death of Elisa Lamb. Elisa Lamb was a 21-year-old college student who traveled from Vancouver to Los Angeles in 2013 and stayed at the hotel. After hotel guests complained about the low water pressure and the water's weird taste, management decided to investigate. Maintenance worker Santiago Lopez went to the hotel's roof and found Elisa Lamb's dead, naked body floating in the hotel water tanks. Her clothes laid nearby the area. After the investigation, the police released the CCTV footage of Elisa hours before her said death. Sometime shortly after, Elisa's family filed for a missing persons case. Police have searched the hotel, even the rooftop, to find no signs of Elisa. Then came the hotel's complaints claiming that the sink water would run black, then goes back to normal after a few seconds. Another complaint was that the tap water tasted weird. The CCTV footage showed Miss Lamb entering the elevator in a hurry. Also, she was frantically pressing the buttons on the elevator. Elisa was checking outside to see if someone was coming after her. She looked distressed, tired, and scared. In later reports, there were claims that Elisa was bipolar and her behavior in the CCTV footage proves this to be true. But her family and friends were still determined to find out what happened to her and exerted all their efforts to bring her justice. To this day, this case remains unsolved. Number four, serial killers stayed at the hotel. Not one, but two serial killers were confirmed to have stayed at the Cecil Hotel. The most famous being the mid-80s serial killer, Richard the Night Stalker Ramirez, who earned his nickname by stalking the streets of Los Angeles and San Francisco from 1984 to 1985, looking for innocent victims to butcher. A known Satanist, he used handguns, knives, a machete, a tire iron, and a hammer to murder his victims. Richard Ramirez, who lived in a room on the top floor. At this time, there were so many addicts and dodgy characters in the hotel that Ramirez never raised any suspicions. In fact, he would return to the Cecil after committing a murder and simply throw his bloody clothes into the hotel dumpster and proceed to walk naked through the corridors. No one ever questioned this. His crimes were so sinister that the judge described the murders as cruelty, callousness, and viciousness beyond any human understanding. During his sadistic killing spree, Ramirez reportedly often stayed at the Cecil Hotel. Rooms were just $14 a night back then, and the area around the hotel was known for being a popular hangout for junkies. So Ramirez stalking the streets late at night would not have caused too much suspicion. He died on death row at San Quentin Prison, age 53 years old, in 2013. In 1991, the Austrian serial killer Johann Jack Unterweger also stayed at the hotel. He was sent to LA to research crime and prostitution in the city, and would even ride along with cops. No one suspected that he was a serial killer who strangled at least 10 women to death. Austrian serial killer and journalist Jack Unterweger was a guest at the Cecil Hotel in the early 1990s under the pretense of his journalistic work, which he was well-renowned and respected for. Unterweger brutally murdered three sex workers. Unterweger murdered 11 prostitutes in Vienna, Prague, and Los Angeles, often by strangling them to death with their own lingerie between 1990 and 1992. His first murder was in 1974, but he was released as a successfully re-socialized prisoner. Unterweger stayed at the Cecil Hotel while working for an Austrian magazine, writing stories about crime in LA. He could use his status as a reporter to secure rides with the LAPD and drive around areas that would soon become crime scenes of his own making. The hotel's location and the vicinity's many prostitutes made this a prime spot to hunt his victims. The method in which Unterweger strangled his victims using a distinct ligature, tied him as a prime suspect to three homicides in the LA area, and he was eventually arrested in Miami. In 1994, in Austria, he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. On the night of his sentencing, he hanged himself behind bars, applying the same knot that he used to strangle his victims. Number three, the tragedy of Pigeon Goldie. As with most ordinary citizens who grew up in a time without the internet, Little information exists about Goldie Osgood before her death. Goldie was a telephone operator, 
a job held by many women in early 1900s America. Goldie's day-to-day -day involved managing a switchboard and manually connecting telephone callers by plugging the ringing cable into the destination jack. Goldie would have struggled to support herself into her old age, and the hotel offered the opportunity for guests to stay long-term and cheaply. Many other guests of the Cecil Hotel became tenants and lived there for years. Within the community of the hotel and the neighborhood, Pigeon Goldie was a familiar face. Each day, Goldie would walk to the nearby Pershing Square. Wearing her L.A. Dodgers baseball cap, a bag of bird seed at her feet, Goldie would stand for hours feeding the pigeons. Often she'd chase away larger birds, ensuring the small, weak, or sickly animals got a meal. This simple act of kindness earned her the nickname Pigeon Goldie. After a day spent just like any other, Goldie said goodnight to fellow tenants of the Cecil Hotel and walked into her room for the final time. Only an hour later, Goldie's body would be discovered by a man distributing telephone books to hotel rooms. Goldie, the kindly pensioner, was strangled with one of the hotel's hand towels by an attacker who's never been caught to this day. Harrowingly, as well as being murdered, Goldie had been badly beaten and raped. Upon discovering the ransacked room, it was noted that the bags of bird seed and Dodger's cap were strewn on the floor close to Goldie's body. It's possible that her attacker had lain in wait for her return to the Cecil that day. Friends also living in the hotel were stunned by how quickly the attack had happened. Several told the police that they'd seen Goldie only moments before her body was found, a trifling mercy that the attack was over quickly for such a gentle lady. Who killed Pigeon Goldie? The question is likely to remain unanswered for all time. Goldie's killer will probably be 70 years old or more if they're still living. It seems unlikely that they will ever come forward or be found by law enforcement. A man was arrested at the time, Jacques Allinger. The 29-year-old was discovered roaming streets close to the hotel covered in blood. Later, he was ruled out as a suspect. Goldie's death was connected to other crimes in the area, but the link seemed tenuous at best and never led anywhere. Perhaps the most likely lead came from the connection made by a medical examiner between Goldie's death and the death of a woman called Mrs. Beva Brown. The second lady had been murdered a couple of months before Goldie. Mrs. Brown was 50 years old, and the manner of her killing was a similar M.O. to Goldie's, including the fact that she was staying in a hotel in the same area. Number 2. There have been 16 sudden or unexpected deaths in or around the Cecil Hotel. In the Cecil Hotel's history, some 16 deaths have occurred in or around the establishment, 12 of which are thought to be suicides, with the others comprised of murder or supposed accidents, including falling from the building, earning the nickname Hotel Death. Long-term residents started referring to the Cecil Hotel as the suicide in 1962, and with good reason. While the first ever death at the hotel, a man named William McKay, was determined to be caused by natural causes in 1926, the very next year saw its first suicide. Percy Orman Cook committed suicide by shooting himself in the head at 52 years old. This began a long and tragic trend of people attempting suicide and completed suicides at the hotel. People have taken their lives at the hotel by overdosing, slitting their throats, ingesting poison, jumping from the roof or windows, or by gunshot. Some incidents have left people questioning if it really was a suicide like Grace Magro. She fell or jumped from a nine-story window. Her boyfriend claimed to be asleep at the time. Upon her descent, she became entangled in telephone wires which ripped from the poles. Another harrowing incident is Pauline Otten's leap out of the ninth floor window. Not only did she kill herself, but also an elderly pensioner on the street below. Twelve of the sixteen acknowledged deaths involving the Cecil Hotel are believed to be suicides. Number 1. The hotel will be reopening soon. Technically, the hotel is not currently open, but according to reports, it has plans to reopen by October 2021. The hotel's website doesn't work, but there is an active Yelp page. In 2014 and 2016, the hotel underwent more management changes before closing in 2017. In that same year, the city landmarked the building. In 2019, developers announced it was undergoing renovations that are scheduled to finish in 2021, but due to COVID-19, still not completed. Seedy hotel with a dark past is enough to scare off any potential guest, especially when it's one that receives so many bad reviews. However, true crime tourism is a real phenomenon. All the attention the hotel has received over the last couple of years has been good for business. 
There were plans to reopen in late 2019 with Simon Barron submitting an application detailing plans. On-site sell and dispensing of a full line of alcoholic beverages in conjunction with a 150,753 square foot hotel with 299 in-room mini bars, ground floor restaurant, lobby bar, and rooftop bar with 349 indoor seats and 312 outdoor seats. Hours of operation of the restaurant, lobby bar, and rooftop bar are from 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. daily. The roof to spot where Lamb's body was found will seemingly be converted into an amenity space for hotel guests. It was also reported that the developing firm had taken a $30 million loan to redevelop the building in 2020. However, the pandemic has halted any progress, so it is still too early to tell if a grand renovation is actually in the works.